your wavy, up your gravy, up your gravy. Up your gravy, up your gravy, up your gravy. 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 Up your gravy, up your if you want to check out what I made this past Friday, you can click the link in my description. You can click, you can click the link in my description and you can check out what I dropped this past Friday. I'd greatly appreciate any other checks that are the link is in the description. Let me know your favorite song. Let me know your favorite. 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 Let me know your favorite song. Was it yesterday? I saw this this comedian. This it's quite a big comedian here in South Africa. Uh, Luis Ogola. I saw him in the mall. It was very random. He's very tall. I, I've heard, I watched interviews of his, and people always in the interviews, the people that interview him are, are always like, "You're very tall." But so when you see it in real life, you're like, "What the hell? This guy's very tall." He's a celebrity here. He's he's quite quite a big deal here in South Africa. And he's just walking in the mall by himself. He's a very like laid back guy. He doesn't have a car. I think he just. He walks everywhere and takes bicycles and stuff. That's in Ubers. He doesn't drive. I don't think he can drive. I don't even think he has a driver's license. I think he talked about that in an interview. Yeah, he's very like... <laughs> I was driving badly today, by the way. I... I got hooted at once. I did something stupid. Well... I don't know whose fault it was because there was something, someone driving. I was in one lane, like it was like one lane, right? So the cars were going this way in that lane, and then there's another lane next to us where the cars were going in the other direction. But the, the person in front of me was moving very slowly, so I wanted to overtake them because I saw no cars were coming this way. So I wanted to overtake the person in front of me, but then there was this Mercedes that kind of appeared and was moving quite quickly, so. I had to, I, I, there was enough time for me to get back into my lane, but the Mercedes was just hooting up, beep, beep, beep. So was that my fault or was it the slow person's fault? I, I guess it's both our fault. I, I, I don't know, because was that an overtaking lane? Were you allowed to, because in some lanes you are allowed to overtake if there's like the, 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 the dotted line, like the break, the broken line. If it's a sudden line, you're not allowed to. So I actually don't know. Anyway. Got these, these sweets, these candies here. They're called uh, Tangy Tops. Tangy. Layers of fruit flavored jelly and foam. They're kind of like sour ish, sour ish. And then they got the, the, the foam, which is like marshmallow and, and the fruits. And the fruits are passion fruit, pineapple, apple. And uh, raspberry. Mm. By the way, I am. I've been enjoying writing love poems, and I'm gonna continue to do so. And when I have enough, I'll publish an anthology. I was thinking maybe a hundred. I might. I might do fifty. Like fifty poems. 50 is a good number. 50 is a lot. Is it still a lot and I can still publish? Because I'm thinking 100 poems. If I do one a day, that's like 100 days. It's just it's a long... It's you know, three months and some change. <clears throat> Maybe it might be three months. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if I'm just patient. But I don't know if it needs to be 100. I can just make it 50. 50 poems. Maybe I can sell it for like five dollars or something. Maybe I can sell it for like five.
so yeah i'll just keep writing and then we'll see maybe when i have 50 i'll publish and then i can publish multiple times this year we'll see it's still writing my book by the way in case people are wondering i write every day i'm just making incremental progress <clears throat> trying not to rush it focusing on really fleshing out the characters you know i've got a, a a small cast of characters small main cast at least so i just want to make sure that all of them are important and interesting you don't want to waste characters you don't want to have people on your screen that no one cares about anyway i don't know if anyone's following the drake kendrick situation it's like sports. It's like sports for me. I'm invested, dude. You know when you're invested in sports, when your guy, when you, you're, you're super passionate about whoever it is you're supporting. So with boxing, I'm an Anthony Joshua kind of guy. I support him. Um, who else do I support in boxing? You know the other people. I'm not as invested in a win or lose. You know, I, I'm not. I'm impartial whether it's Terence Crawford or whoever he's fighting. Oh, I don't know if I've ever been a Devin Haney fan. Ryan Garcia, he's a bit extra. Ryan Garcia, he's you know, he's a bit all over the place. Sometimes the social media antics, they can be funny, but I'm like, man, he recently got busted for doping. I don't know. He says the allegations are uh, false, but. Oh, you see. He might have been taking performance enhancing drugs for his last fight. So that's gonna. That's a big no no. In combat sports. Because you can put your opponent's life in danger when you're, when you're doing stuff like that. Butter flavored, like bagged popcorn. Air popped corn. It was not that good, to be honest. The flavoring was, was weak. You get very invested with sports and it's a roller coaster, right? You, you feel good emotions, bad emotions, all that sort of stuff. So with this with this uh Drake Kendrick beef, I'm I'm team Drake. And it's been a roller coaster. There's days where you're like, yeah, and then these days where like we are angry, whatever the case may be. I'm trying to not get too caught up in it because you know, I'm an adult and you don't wanna it's like, it's like guys that watch football, like soccer, and, and, and cry after the team loses. It's like, whoa, 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 come on. Or people that get super invested in the Ronaldo versus Messi debate, like to the point where like, they want to actually throw hands and stuff. And it's like, whoa, whoa, no, no, don't do that. So, you know, men in general get super invested in sports. Super invested. So, I'm trying to keep that in check. I'm trying to like not get too caught up. I was sitting in church and I was, I found myself thinking about it when I should have been, not well, it was, it was mainly during like the worship when, the, when they were playing the music. I found myself thinking about the, the Drake Kendrick thing. I'm like, wait, but you're in church, bro, focus. I, I managed to rein in my thoughts and, and focus before the pastor started preaching. But I, I was thinking about it while I was like worshiping for a bit. Yeah, like I said, I eventually got myself together. But yeah, I say all that to say I'm, I'm trying to not get too invested. But oh my gosh, dude. If you'd know what's going on, you'd, you'd understand why. 
it's crazy it's it's gotten it's it's gotten out of hand because the gloves are off man <clears throat> where do i even begin So for those that have no idea what's going on with this whole thing, I'll explain briefly. You got two rappers, Drake versus Kendrick. Drake's the biggest rapper in the world. A lot of people don't like him, <clears throat> which is just what comes with success. When you're the biggest in any field, naturally people are gonna turn against you. That happens with literally everyone. When you're when you're successful for a short period of time people will appreciate you but once you become once you keep winning repeatedly that's when people start to sour that's when it's like okay enough you need to, you need to let someone else have a turn that's the attitude that develops so it's crazy the, the, the crowd it feels like this is what it feels like this is what it seems like from my perspective the entire crowd almost is like against this guy Obviously, he has his fans, such as myself, but I think we're a minority compared to like the general crowd who is fed up because this guy's been dominating hip hop for like 15 years. He's been the biggest artist for 15 years. He's just consistently, his year and stats have been the best for like 15 years, dude. He's just been the biggest name for 15 years. So, uh, people are tired. It's, uh, yeah, people, they're like, no, we need, we need to get this guy out of here by any means necessary. So you've got Kendrick, who, who who represents, like, you know, he's more, he's viewed as being more artsy and for the people. And, like, Drake is, like, the pop star, culture vulture, all this sort of stuff, right? And Kendrick is this, like, purist, and he's the artist's artist, and all that. He's the rapper's rapper, you know? And Drake is just this pop clown, I guess, who's just using hip hop as a crash cash grab. That's how a lot of people see it, which is not true. I think that's just a, a biased, hate-filled perspective because he's he's very good at rapping. Gold Roses, Champagne Poetry, Six PM in New York, Five AM in, in, in Toronto. Uh, red buttons I can the tusk in there the Wu-Tang forever I can keep going I can keep going he's got so many great rap records he's just rapping no hooks nothing just spinning bars he's got so many of those I can't even oh my god what was 4pm in Calabasas like a lot there's a lot there's a lot and so he's a, he's definitely a very good rapper People just don't like that he's commercially successful. Anyway, so these two, Kendrick and Drake, you know, they've been going at each other for for years now, but it's been subtle jabs. There hasn't been anything big. Things kicked off very recently. Like a, like, uh, like a month or two ago, Kendrick, out of nowhere, appears on this song with Future and Metro Booming on a song called Like That, where he disses Drake. And this is like, this is the, it's like a serious diss now. Like he's actually calling him out and then saying this and that about him. So Drake is like, okay, you want, you want confrontation? Fine. So three weeks later, Drake responds to the track called Push Ups, where he's not only calling out Kendrick, but there was, it was, it was it's a crazy situation because Future was, if you if you don't if you don't know Future is he's also a big rapper. Future and Drake have been working together for years, like since twenty fourteen I think, and and even before then they were friendly, but they really started working together like around twenty fourteen I think, and they had them in twenty fifteen they made a whole album together, <laughs> and they've been like giving hip hop fans a lot of songs together. Drake and Future that's been a a, a duo that we've. All, all known and loved for, for years now, for many years, for like a decade. At this point, you've just loved that musical duo. Out of nowhere, like it just caught us by surprise, Future's dissing Drake on that song like that with Kendrick. And the album in which 
they were dissing Drake. It's called We Don't Trust You. And that album was full of people just dissing Drake. It was a diss album. And then they released another one, another album, with full of people just dissing Drake. So everyone was like, whoa, what's happening? This is a crazy situation. Everyone's dissing this guy. So, like, that's where this whole 20v1 thing came from. Because Drake on push-ups was like, what the fuck, is this a 20v1? Everyone's coming at me. And they've been saying all sorts of crazy things. You're, you're, you're biracial, no one likes you, you're not really black, you don't belong in the hip-hop community, you're just a white boy, you're a colonizer, you're a culture vulture. These are things people have literally been saying. And all this sort of stuff, and they're trying to get him out of here. But the main one was Kendrick, right? Kendrick was the, the main person. He's the biggest of the people dissing him. So Kendrick released like that. Drake reaches push-ups, so he's not just addressing Kendrick, he's addressing everyone who is dissing him. So it was, it, was a, it was a significant track for that reason, because it was like, this guy's really like dissing... He's like dissing everyone and... and to, He's dissing everyone and, you know, and being successful at it. He, like, he was actually spinning bars. So then Drake releases push-ups. He doesn't get a response from Kendrick. Then he releases a song called Taylor Made Freestyle, which was very, like, people were, like, shocked. So what he did was he got an AI voice filter. So he writes and then records himself, and then he puts an AI voice filter on his recordings. He, so he did three verses. The first verse, he got an AI voice filter of Tupac. And Tupac is one of Kendrick's idols, and Kendrick has talked about how he feels like the reincarnation of Tupac. And all because, you know, Tupac was a, a big L.A. rapper and... Yeah, 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 he's just an he's just an icon in in, in hip hop in general, but specifically in in in, in LA. Uh, so, big, 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 big inspiration for Kendrick. So Drake is rapping from the perspective of Tupac, telling him like, "Bro, where are you? You need a diss, Drake. Like you're letting this guy run circles around you. It's not it's not appropriate. Like the West Coast, you need to stand up for the West Coast and like show show us what you're made of. And there's this light skinned guy." This light-skinned Canadian is making him look stupid. So that's very disrespectful already, right? Because like, this is like a, a Kendrick's idol, and to he, and it sounded like Tupac, which was what was crazy. So Kendrick's hearing this, so you, you can imagine it's getting under his skin. And then Drake takes it further and raps from the perspective of Snoop Dogg, who Drake has a close relationship with, as well. People don't realize that because people like this is so disrespectful da, 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 da. No, drake knows snoop dogg and snoop dogg didn't denounce it so it seems like he was fine with it anyway he raps on the perspective of snoop dogg was also an la legend he handed kendrick the, the porch at some event years ago it was a while ago like 2011 2010 or something i can't remember it's a long time ago and he basically said to Kendrick, like, you're the torchbearer of L.A. hip-hop now. Like, you're the L.A. guy. And Kendrick was crying. It was a big moment for him. So so he, Drake was rapping from the perspective of Snoop Dogg saying, like, bro, I handed you the torch, and now you're letting this light-skinned Canadian guy do this to you and do that to you. Like, nah, show him what L.A. rappers are made of. Drop. Where are you? It's been several days and you haven't said anything. Drop, drop, drop. And then, yeah, then finally Drake raps from his own perspective, just dissing Kendrick and and saying that the reason why he didn't drop was because he wanted Taylor Swift's album to have his, to lose steam before he drops. And that's why he called it Taylor Made Freestyle, because you're saying Taylor made your schedule. She made your release schedule. You, you're taking orders from Taylor Swift and all these sorts of things. But you're supposed to be a rapper. Why are you playing these pop star games and all these sorts of so it was very disrespectful. <laughs> like it really got under his skin clearly. And then it took Kendrick a total of 17 days to respond. He was very quiet. But when he did respond, he responded with Euphoria. Euphoria was... I didn't think it was a good diss. I think it, it just barred from everything everyone's been saying about Drake for the past 15 years. I really don't think it was a good diss at, at all. 
but people went crazy about it because again it's it's a lot of people that are already against Drake and are, are waiting for anything that can potentially get him out of here. So I think it doesn't take much to get them excited at all. And here's the thing, right? It'll take more for Drake to impress the crowd than it will for Kendrick. Drake will have to do a lot more to impress the crowd than, than Kendrick will. Kendrick can... Kendrick went missing for 17 days. No one has ever done that in hip-hop history. He, he's initiated a beef and then he went missing, like dead silent for 17 days. The person who initiates the, the beef is usually the one that moves the fastest, responds the fastest and stuff like that. Because people say Drake took three weeks to respond to like that. But again, I've said this before, like that was the initial diss. Drake doesn't have to respond. The beef only starts once Drake responds. So if Kendrick makes like that and Drake doesn't respond, Kendrick can't say, I won the beef. The beef never started, bro. You can't beef by yourself. It only starts once the person responds. So Drake responded three weeks later. It, it's then on the person who made the first disc to respond very quickly after that second disc, after that person responds. After the person you dissed responds, it's up to you to respond very quickly to that response. The example people like to use to counter that is Jay-Z and Nas. Like Nas took uh, three months to, to release Ether. They leave out the part where Jay-Z was the first person to diss Nas. So Nas was just responding to the initial diss. And then Jay-Z responded seven days after Nas released Ether. So Jay-Z, as the person who initiated the diss, the, the battle, was very quick in his responses. In the first round. It was really like one round. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't last very long. Because Jay-Z released Takeover, Nas released an Ether. And Ether, <laughs> basically after Ether was done. Because people were like, nah, Ether is crazy. People are like, Ether's crazy, Nas won. So it's really like a one-round battle. But anyway, so Jay-Z, as the person who started the whole thing, was very quick in his responses. Because after Nas released Ether, Jay-Z came back seven days later. This was 2001. Things moved slower back then. Anyway, I didn't like Euphoria. I thought it was... He's just talking about how Drake is... He's not black. He's like a mixed race and he's this imposter and he's got identity issues because he's mixed race. It's actually racist, but that's very normal in hip hop. It's very normal that, it, like, you know, it's primarily a black genre and a lot of these pro black hitty blacks, that's the sort of people in this, that's like a lot of people in this space. So it's very normal to encounter people who say very racist things. Like, for example, if a white person tries to comment on this, there was a streamer who was talking about how he thinks Drake is winning and everyone told him to shut up because he's white. He's not allowed to have an opinion on, on rap music, which is which is crazy. And people say Eminem can never be a goat, like can never be a great rapper because he's white. He can never be considered the, one of the greatest rappers because he's white. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Like his music is great. He is one of the greatest. But they'll say no because he's white. He's a white boy. So people in hip, like a lot of the black people in hip are very racist. Very racist. And Kendrick has been at the forefront of this whole pro-black movement in hip hop. So it doesn't surprise me that he's taking this angle of Drake's not really black and he's a white boy and he's a colonizer. He literally called him a colonizer and all these sorts of things. And he says the only reason he's doing songs with all these black artists is because he's colonizing them. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so hip hop, very, very racist. Um, at least some of it, some people within, a lot of people within this space, very racist. But anyway, uh, Euphoria was just comprised of nonsense like that. There's just been rumor that Drake got Sergio and his pics, even though there's no evidence for that. Drake has a, a bunch of shirtless pics online. You can go look, I don't see any signs of surgery. They, they say he got surgery for his abs. How do you even tell? How do you know that? Mm. But it doesn't have to be true. That's the thing I realized. If people don't like someone, 
you can say anything about it about that person and people go along with it because they don't like that person so they'll literally go along with whatever narrative that makes that person look bad so there's just been rumors that he got surgery for his pecs and his abs he, they, <laughs> there was a rumor started that he got a nose job his nose looks exactly the same as it did like since 2009 because people keep comparing photos like look look if you look really closely you can see that his nose is different most people said it looks the same so i don't think people bought the whole nose job narrative but anyway so euphoria eh but then he released 616 in la i think that was the day 616 in la And that one was like a bit more hectic because now he's talking about you've got a mole in your camp who's, who's been telling me a lot of things about you and you better watch your tone or else I'll expose you, this, that, and the third. You're a horrible person. People don't like you. You're a culture vulture, this, that, and the third. So that just made people go crazy and they said, oh no, like Drake, Drake's finished, Euphoria, and then 616 in LA, oh no, this is crazy. Then Drake released, what was the name of the song that Drake released? Was it yesterday? It's, 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 it's a lot of songs and it's they've both released four songs each, so eight songs in total. So it feels like it's been a long thing, but it's been like, this has happened, well, it's also been like... Kendrick took 17 days to respond, so that's why it's also felt it feels longer than it actually is. But anyway, Drake released Family Matters, yeah, and that track was brutal. The big things that Drake said in that song is Kendrick's best friend and manager impregnated Kendrick's wife. So the child everyone thought was Kendrick's is not actually Kendrick's child. It's his... Uh, best friend's child so he's so while kendrick was with he's still he's still with his wife's name is whitney he's still with whitney while kendrick was with whitney dave which is kendrick's friend impregnated whitney whitney and drake was like why do we never see pictures of your son like looking at the camera why do we never like it's so rare well it's because you you don't want us to see that that's not your kid because i know who your kid is I know, I know who's the father of that kid. It's Dave Free. His name is Dave Free, the, the, the guy that was the father of the child. And he said Kendrick beats his wife. Apparently, there's, that, that's the thing. He said, he said, like, you don't want people to know that you put your hands on your wife and yada, yada, yada. And what else? Well, I think that was the third thing. Those are the two main ones. You beat your wife and you, 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 that's not your son, bro. That's your best friend's son. Um, oh, yeah. And then uh, Kendrick, the, 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 the head of Kendrick's label, Top Dog. Uh, it, this was started in push-ups. What Drake said in push-ups that Top Dog takes 50% of all your earnings. So Kendrick is very rich. And he's a very big artist. So even if he gets 50%, it's still a lot of money. But imagine 50% of, of one of the biggest artists in the world's revenue. 50% is crazy. So those, those are the main shots that were taken. That's not your son. You're beating your wife. And your contract is fucked. Kendrick responded with a song called Meet the Grams. Meet the Grams. I don't know how do you say it? Meet the Grams. Grams. His name is Aubrey Graham. Aubrey Graham. 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 I think it's, I say Graham. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Meet the Grams. In which he, was, he, he wrote a letter to Drake's child, Drake's son. He wrote a letter to Drake's mother and he wrote a letter to drake's father and then he addressed drake directly so when he was talking to drake's son he was saying your father's a bitch 
this, that, and the third. Don't be like your dad. Your dad is terrible. He had a, he, your mom is a porn star. And so you shouldn't, he's talking to his son, which is, which is weird. Like, he's a child. So, you know, I don't know if you should be involving. Like, it, it, I don't think you should be addressing kids that way. But anyway, it is what it is. That's the road, that's the route Kendrick chose to take. It's weird because he's addressing Adonis directly, you know, so... Ah, anyway. Adonis is the ch- name of Drake's child. He's just basically saying that... Your dad stepped to the porn star and then he had you and... But, but you don't be like that and you be a better person because your dad is evil. This time the third and he's like sought to, to, to Drake's mom whose name is Sandra. He was like... Uh, what's wrong with your kid? Like your kid is messed up, he's... He's got gambling problems and drinking problems. I'm, I don't know where he's getting this information from. He's just, it feels like he's just making this stuff up. But anyway. Uh, and yeah, he's a bad person. And then Drake's father he said the same thing, basically. Your child is a, a bad person. And then he just eventually said, when he was addressing Drake directly in the song, he was saying, Drake, he basically said Drake is the, 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 the Epstein the Jeffrey Epstein of rap because he's running a sex trafficking ring and doing terrible things to women and he, he's he got a secret daughter that no one knows about and um, what else and he's just a bad person he extorts people he does this he does that so those were the, the shots that were taken so obviously that's those shots are worse than what Drake said in um they are worse than what Drake said in in Family Matters about Kendrick. Kendrick beats his wife and his child is not his and he's got a terrible contract. It's worse if it's true. So here's... So this is where it gets crazy. You thought it wasn't crazy. It gets crazy. It gets crazier. So with what Drake said about Kendrick, here's here's the thing. His wife is yet to deny any of the allegations. She's yet to deny that Kendrick put his hands on her. She hasn't denied that. It was a funny line. Because Drake was like, is it self-defense because she's bigger than you? Because his wife is significantly taller than Kendrick. So Drake was like, it's probably self-defense. Because she's a lot bigger than you. But anyway, she's, she's de- she hasn't denied it at all. And by the way, these rumors have been circulating for years now about Kendrick. In 2014, there was a story... That Kendrick had violently beat a woman at a club until she was bloody. And all those news stories have been kind of scrubbed from the internet. It's very hard to find. You find some blog posts, but these aren't like reputable blogs. All the big ones, all the big peop- sto- uh, blogs that were posting these stories, they've, they've been forced to remove it. It seems like it's been scrubbed from the internet, the incident that happened in 2014. And Kendrick also went on the Breakfast Club to deny everything. He was like, no, I never did that. Like, they're just lying. They're just lying. But it was a big story at the time, right? And now, Drake's talking about how you beat your wife, bro. You beat your wife, and we know you, what you're doing behind closed doors. So now it's popping up again, this narrative that Kendrick beats women, and he's beating his wife in particular, and his wife is not denying it. Because you know how simple it would be to just come out and say, this is lies, I love my husband, so on and so forth. She hasn't done that. And she hasn't denied that the first child she had is not Kendrick's. She hasn't denied that that's Dave Free's baby. And she doesn't follow Kendrick on Instagram, but she follows Dave Free. So people are like, what's going on here? Guys, it's about optics. So if you're Kendrick's wife, right, even if you're not like an Instagram person and you're like, you're not about the social media life, you have to understand at this point, things look very bad. Your story is spreading around about your husband and you're keeping quiet. I would hope if I have a wife and she's also, you know, she's a public figure. She's got a, a, a decent following on Instagram. People know who she is. I'd hope that if, if if my wife saw that people were saying crazy things about me and apparently I'm doing things to her, I'd hope my wife 
like stands up for me and says, no, that's these are lies. My husband never did that or that. My, my husband has never done anything of that nature to me. Just, just to kind of dead the narrative, right? Whitney has been radio silent. No one has heard anything from her. She's on Instagram. She posts. She's got a public account. It's not even private. It's very odd that she's very quiet and that Drake is saying all these things about her and she's she's not denying any of it. She's not cursing him out. She's not fighting him. She's just like, shh. And she doesn't follow her husband. You know, maybe it's not a big deal that, you know, it's not a rule that you have to follow your husband, but it's weird when you follow the alleged baby father. You follow his best friend who allegedly is the father of your child but you don't follow the actual husband and you're not saying anything publicly to dis to disprove that anyway so there's more evidence that what kendrick is being accused of is actually true but there's no evidence oh by the way the biggest thing probably Wait, let me, let me, so now with Kendrick's accusations against Drake, the, <laughs> wait, before we get into that, because here's the crazy thing. So everything Kendrick said, you're hiding a child, you're running some sex trafficking ring, you've got moles in your camp and most of your friends want you to fail and all these sorts of things. It turns out that that mole that was feeding Kendrick all this information was was a fake mole. He was feeding Kendrick bad information. So Kendrick, when he released uh, what was the name of that song? Six Sixteen in L.A. When he released that song. It had a cover art of a shirt, gloves, some prescript medical prescriptions. The prescription was for Ozempic, which is he's claiming that Drake, you know, the surgery thing, abs, the the the, the chest, he's taking pills for his figure and all these sorts of all this nonsense. So that, that was a cover art. And you're saying the narrative around that was that somehow, some way Drake I mean Kendrick got a hold of Drake's father's suitcase and all those items were in that suitcase. And he wanted Drake to know that he has that information, he has those items in his possession, so he posted it as his cover art. Little did he know that that evidence was planted there and the mole that gave him that suitcase Gave it to him on purpose so that he could think that Drake has a fake daughter, all these sorts of things. Because like, he was telling him all these things, right? So then Kendrick writes the song, you've got a fake daughter, she's 11 years old, she's this, she's that. In the video, Drake's video, Family Matters, the images of this girl. It's subtle. If, if you don't know what to look for, you'll miss it. But now that I'm telling you this, you can watch the video and you'll see it. It's towards the end. That same, that's the same girl that people are saying is Drake's daughter. It turns out she's a paid actor. She was in J. Cole's video, like the All My Life video, and she's been involved in other things as well. So she's not actually Drake's daughter. And this video, there's images of her wearing a jersey with like Drake's face on it and stuff. So they, they have some sort of working relationship but she's not his daughter so it seems like she's just been part of this plot to to fool kendrick and the reason why because people might wonder why would you spread false rumors about yourself because the more drake was telling the more what to say tell him i did this and tell him i'm this and tell him i got a fake daughter and tell him that da, da, da. so people might wonder why because it because then Kendrick is writing diss tracks based on lies, on false information. And then once you publicize what you've done to him, people will be like, oh my God, he tricked you. So Kendrick actually had to delete the cover art 
of 616. No, was it 616 or no, it was Meet the Grams. It was Meet the Grams, not, not 616 in LA. It was Meet the Grams. He had to delete the cover art of Meet the Grams because he realized it was all fake. Because actually the shirt was apparently the shirt was like a I don't know about the details behind the shirt, but it was like a short joke because Kendrick is very short. So it was making some kind of short joke about Kendrick's height and the gloves were Maybach gloves and, and Rick Ross's labels Maybach music. So it was like a diss towards Rick Ross. And, the, you know, there's a joke that Rick Ross takes with Zempic. So the Zempic thing was a diss towards Rick Ross. The whole thing was a big troll. And Kendrick has just been fed bad information. So when Kendrick realized, oh my god, I've been had, he had to delete the cover art and stuff. And those diss tracks are basically irrelevant now because all the information on there was fake. So what Kendrick ends up doing, very soon after he realizes, realizes this, he releases a song that leans in on another narrative, a very ugly narrative, that Drake is a pedophile. And he's just basically calling him and his uh, crew Drake's crew is known as OVO, October's very own. He's got a label called October's very own as well. But they're known as the OVO crew. You know, that's his clique, his squad, his posse, whatever. Basically saying Drake and everyone in his posse are pedophiles. That's Kendrick's claim. Now this all started, this, this narrative that Drake is a pedophile, because Billie Eilish and Millie Bobby Brown talked publicly about how they text Drake on their phones. They said, Millie Bobby Brown said, I text Drake about like relationship issues I'm having. And Billie Eilish said, I, I have Drake on my phone. We talk sometimes. So people were like, that's gross. Why, why are you talking to teenagers? Because they were teenagers at the time. They were minors at the time. So people were like, you're a pedophile because you're talking to them on your phone. Da, da, da. I'm like, guys, that's crazy. That doesn't make you a pedophile. These words have actual definitions, you know. Being a pedophile means something. Like it means you're sexually attracted to children and you have inappropriate relations with them like sex of a sexual nature. Someone having uh, a 16-year-old on their phone that they, they text from time to time. Uh, look, when I, was, when I was 16, 17, around that age, there was a lady I had in my life. Her name was Dee. She was like 50-something at the time. She was a mentor. She would drive me around. She would take me to family gatherings, go to meets at restaurants and just talk. And I genuinely liked the. I felt like she was a friend, but also a mentor and stuff like that. She would take me to church. We were close. It was never weird. It was never weird. I was, I was 16. I was a minor. But again, from the perspective of all of people that have weird brains and they, they, every, they, everything they see, they always try and make it weird. Just just texting someone on your phone. Because at the Billie Eilish and Millie Bobby Brown are very big public figures. You might see them at events. Billie Eilish at the time was the biggest pop star in the world. She'd just come out of she just dropped Bad Guy and that album of hers, Where Do We Go and You Fall Asleep and Yeah, maybe she has Drake's number and like they talk about music or something, I don't know. Maybe he's giving advice. Who knows what they're talking about, but I'm not going to say that you're a pedophile just because you're texting this mega pop star who is 16, but like, you're not a pedophile because you're texting her. I'm saying the P word a lot. I need to chill. Because <laughs> YouTube might demonetize my video. Anyway. Millie Bobby Brown texts Drake about relationship problems from time to time. Okay. Uh, again, the word... The P word has a meaning, guys. You can't, because these are serious accusations that ruin people's lives. It's not small things, but people make jokes out of it because it's like the people in the Coliseum who want to see blood and it's, enter it's just entertainment for them. Uh, death, we want to see blood, blood, blood. You know, the emperor would ask the crowd, do I give this person mercy or do you want, to, or should they die? And the crowd would scream for blood. What not? I think the emperor actually decides whether he wants to give mercy or whatnot. But sometimes the crowd will just scream for blood. They'll scream for murder, like in these death matches. 
that's what it feels like now where it's like people get entertainment out of people's downfall like they don't care that this could ruin someone's life we should be very sure that it's true they don't care i'm like it's serious it's not small So there was an incident like years ago, like 2012, 2011, 2012. It was, it was a while. It was very early in Drake's career. He'd kissed a girl on stage and then he asked her, how old are you? She said she's 17. And he was like, oh, shit. And then that was a, it wasn't a thing at the time. It became a thing like a, like a year or two ago. Like the, the, the footage resurfaced and people were like, look, Drake's beautiful. He's a P-word. I'm like, guys, you didn't know. Do you know how many people have gone to parties and kissed or even done worse, like slept with a girl only to find out afterwards she's underage? That's happened to a lot of people. It hasn't happened to me, by the way. <laughs> That's never happened to me. But it's happened to people. Obviously, there must be grace, but also it depends on the severity of the circumstance. In this situation, he was on stage, he invites a girl, kisses her, then he, she, he really should have confirmed. But also sometimes people look older than they actually are. It's old footage. It is hard to make out the girl's face. She, you know, she, it's, it's, I don't know how old she looked in the, in the video, I don't know. But sometimes you don't know, like you don't know. And it wasn't, a big, it wasn't that big of a deal. And the crowd at the time, they weren't tripping. No one, no one was tripping at the time. That, that, that year that it happened, 2011, 2012, the media wasn't going crazy because people were normal back then. People understood that not everything is that deep. Not everything is, is a big news story. Because real life works. People were like, lived in the real world at the time. Now, like this internet culture where everything is, you know, hyper-dramatized. And people get cancelled for the smallest things. Now they, they they try and bring that back up and say and try and make it something that wasn't. So so those are really the three things that, that incident on the stage, he texted Millie Bobby Brown and he texted Billy Eilish. That's what they're using to say is a P a, a P word. But Kendrick is leaning heavy he he, he released a song where he's just, just leaning heavily on that whole thing. Because that's the only thing he has now. He has nothing else. He's done the whole race thing. Oh, actually, in the same song where he's calling him a P-word, he, he doubled down on the whole race thing, calling him a colonizer again. Which I, I, I just think it's whack. Um, and the people, are, the people are all for it, it seems. Like everyone's just going crazy over that. And they're ignoring the fact that there's a strong chance this guy beats women. There's a strong chance he beats his wife. She's not denying it. And there's a strong chance that his child is not his and all that all that other stuff. But no one cares. No one cares at all. They're just like, Drake's a P word. He's a P word. With no evidence, by the way. Zero evidence. It's crazy. crazy man I really don't know what Drake's going to do to counter this whole narrative it's tough he's a t he's, he's in a tough spot but I think he can get out of it I think if they did the whole mole thing where they gave Kendrick fake information or this well thought out plan and I'd imagine that they they uh accounted for a circumstance in which because this this p-word narrative has been circulating for some time now because of the whole billy eilish millie bobby brown thing people have been talking about it ever since billy eilish said drake text me and millie, millie said drake text me people have been talking about it so i think drake knew that at some point someone in a rap beef is going to bring this up and I'm hoping he had a counter strategy for it. 
because even when you was when he when he released Taylor Made Freestyle and he was rapping from the perspective of Tupac, he said, Kendrick, one of the things you need to do is point out that this guy's a P-word. Like he literally said that. This is Drake writing this, saying, point that out. Talk about how he, he's a P-word. So I'm ass- I'm hoping that he didn't just say that. For like for like the eight mile effect. The eight mile effect is from the movie Eight Mile where Eminem dissed himself first before his opponent could diss him so that he strips the enemy of the power. Because if Eminem acknowledges all his flaws and things that someone else might say about him, it makes it less impactful when the other person tries to say it. But the eight mile effect doesn't work here because the thing that the person is saying about you is is very serious and it's too big to just gloss over it's people aren't gonna just let that slide so i hope Ken, drake wasn't just saying that when he was rapping from tupac's perspective saying kendrick point out the, the p-word thing i hope he wasn't saying that for the eight mile effect i hope he was saying that to goad kendrick into actually going in that direction because he has a counter strategy that's what i'm hoping I don't know if that's what's actually happening. We'll see. But again, this is the same guy who came up with this whole plan to have a fake mole and and make Kendrick post this cover art that's stupid because he's actually dissing people in the cover art. It's, it's genius. I'm hoping that same guy realizes that, look, I'm in a war right now. This guy is going to use everything in his disposal to get me out of here, whether it's true or not. I better be prepared for the worst. Like, what's the worst possible thing that could happen? This is the worst thing. After this, Kendrick has nothing. There's nothing worse than this. So, I hope they accounted for the worst case scenario. We'll see. If he goes silent, that's bad because it means he's... You know, the perception, the public perception would be like he lost the beef and he'll be forever clowned for that. Forever. And and the, the, the P word rumors will stick. But you also don't want to keep going back and forth, having an endless thing where you keep dropping songs, keep dropping songs. So he has to find a way to end this whole thing finally and just get rid of Kendrick. It has to be like something that just discredits Kendrick completely. That makes people look at him different and be like, damn. Because so far Kendrick has been the one dropping the songs that make people go like, whoa, whoa. whoa." Because people don't care that Drake said Kendrick might actually be beating his wife and his kid is not his and he's got a terrible contract and he's got this going on and this going on and this going on. People don't actually care. For whatever reason, they don't care. But, but Ke- Kendrick's allegations against Drake are very serious. Like this, like it's actual jail time type of stuff. Like if it's true, Drake should be in prison. He should be under the prison if any of that stuff is true. Like it's like P Diddy level stuff that Kendrick has been accusing Drake of. So Drake has to come up with something that can, that's verifiable, that can really just put a stop to all of this and really discredit Kendrick and and end him. It has to be a career ender. (laughs) That's where we're at now. Kendrick is taking it too far. He's, Kendrick has taken it to the point where the only thing that can stop him at this point is like a career ending diss track. Because this could put. Because what he's done to Drake is potentially career ending as well. Obviously. So Drake has to return the favor. He has no choice. Because if he just keeps quiet, like, bro. I don't think. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if he can recover from that if he just keeps quiet. I don't think. I don't think. His career will be the same after that if he just lets that slide so we'll see if he's got anything in store. i hope that he planned for this i hope he saw this coming because yeah that, that was probably the biggest thing that people were gonna 
I think we all knew that that was the biggest like thing that people try and use against it. The pedo rumors. So we'll see. Fingers crossed, man. I'll be a, a, a loyal Drizzy fan regardless, you know. I just like his music more than I like other people's music. Like rappers, at least. And in general. But yeah, he's definitely my favorite rapper, so... I'll continue to listen to him. I don't believe all the rumors. I don't think there's any evidence. If you can provide evidence, then, you know, I'll change my tune. But until then, I'm going to keep being a Drizzy fan. Anyway, let me know if you got this far. Because this is 57 minutes thus far, and that's crazy. So if you got this far, drop like a microphone emoji. Because, you know, don't about rap, don't about music. Drop a microphone emoji if you made it this far. That's crazy. Thank you for watching all the way because this is almost an hour so if you made it this far drop a microphone emoji drop a microphone emoji drop, drop a microphone emoji i appreciate you so much thank you all thank you thank you thank you all. you know i have to pray at the end of my video dear father god thank you for this individual watching this right now thank you for making them whole unique and guide them on a path towards peace prosperity and purpose thank you for blessing this person with this wonderful people in their life who love them take care of them bring the absolute best out of them and thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do the same thing thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in their life and by giving thanks they can find peace contentment and attract even more blessings let your presence be found in this person's life so they know that you God, that you love that you love them God is going to be there for them good health long life and happiness for this person everyone they care about in mind never pray in Jesus never pray in Jesus never pray in Jesus never pray in Jesus